What's going on, everyone? I'm just a typical, average American here today to react and learn about Guy Fox and the gunpowder plot. Now, like most Americans, I have heard the name Guy Fox, but what we mostly associate that name with is this. These anonymous masks, these Guy Fox masks, and I've also heard of the phrase, the gunpowder plot, but that's about where my knowledge ends. I know Guy, Flock, Guy Fox plotted to, to blow something up that has to do with British government, and I don't think he succeeded in that, but this just is a crazy, fascinating story that I've, like, heard of, but I don't know anything about it at the same time. I don't know any of the details of what actually happened. So I'm very interested today in actually learning about the story of Guy Fox and the gunpowder plot. So I found this really nice little video here that's actually kind of like a kid's video. It's gonna explain to me, like a child, so that even I can understand uh, Guy Fox and the gunpowder plot. So it's starting off here with Guy Fox and a bunch of like co-conspirators gathered in a room talking about what's gonna happen. <laughs> I've invited you here because the king is treating Catholics like us very badly. Oh. It's not fair. I'm very... <laughs> this is... <laughs> this is perfect. This is so perfect. It's so easy. Okay, the king is treating Catholics like them badly. That's perfect because that was a whole thing I, I wanted to talk about is I don't understand what the motivation behind all this plotting is. So it's about being treated unfairly by the the monarchy, the royalty, the king. So that is very good. Okay. Very angry. And I think you are too. Okay. Am I right? I it's a disgrace. They're angry. We've got to do something to stop the king treating Catholics badly. Okay. And I know what. We must kill the king. Oh, <laughs> that's that's a very effective way to get someone to stop doing something you don't like is just to kill them. So that explains that whole thing. So they basically had to figure out how are they going to kill a king, which is, you know, kind of a crazy thing to even be ha come up with the idea that you're going to do that and figuring out a way to actually kill someone so protected, so high up. So that's with, this is all starting to make a lot more sense. And they're gonna try to blow something up, like blow him up. Is he supposed to be somewhere? And they're gonna just blow it up. Oh, won't that make us the baddies? <laughs> Treating them badly. Oh, is he so oh, 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 wait, what? Did this actually happen? In this conversation, one of them like piped up and was like, hey, they're treating us bad, but killing people is bad too. That would make us bad. Wait, wait a minute. Is Guy Fox just about to be like, shut up, get out of here. Like, <laughs> So who's ready to hear my clever plan? Okay. <laughs> okay, okay. What's the clever plan? So that was Robert Catesby. The leader of the plotters. It was Oh, that wasn't Guy Fox. That was Robert. Someone named Robert. Robert Catesby or Gatsby or I'm just gonna call him Robert. I'm not sure what the last name was. So was Guy Fox in that room when they were kind of discussing all this? I thought Guy Fox was like the head guy, the guy in charge of all this, but this is actually this is kind of the nice part about revealing the details of the history is there is actually other plotters I didn't even know about. It's his idea, not Guy Fawkes. Maybe he should be on the bonfire. Huh. Catesby is good. And also, <laughs> we also, by the way, we get to have a cartoon rat explain all this to us, which is nice. We need a cunning plan to kill the king. Kings were guarded by soldiers, so it won't be easy. Yeah. Okay, listen to my clever plan. Actually, let's call it a plot. Sounds even clever that way. <laughs> <The king. laughs> this is exactly how it happened. E exactly like this. King is going to visit the Houses of Parliament. 
then we attack him. Uh, 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 <laughs> okay. The plot is to blow up the whole building when he's... Blow up the whole building? I don't know what year it is, but it's not like they have a, like, a missile or, like... I don't know if they have dynamite or anything like that at this point in history. I actually don't know that, but their plan is to just, oh my God, not even the room that the king is in, blow up the entire parliament building that he's in? Is that correct? Oh. The plot is to blow up the whole building when he's inside. What? Boom. Oh, man, that would, sadly, that would definitely, like, probably have, like, repercussions of hurting other people that you don't want to affect, but when you're plotting to assassinate a king, like, and you think you're doing it for the entire nation, uh, I guess you don't really have time to consider those things, huh? Oh, After that, God. Catholics like us can take over the country. I feel as if I can smell it already. Wow, this is like a big deal. This is a like I don't know how many like I don't know what you're gonna call this assassination attempts in history there have been to literally wipe out the leader of an entire nation or something and take control. This is a huge the implications of this plan are enormous. Like they literally want to kill the king and then have Catholics like take his place and Treat Catholics better? That's kind of what I'm getting here. Burning. And Ow. here he is at last. Made Guy Fawkes an expert at blowing things up. Oh. I like blowing things up. Oh my god. <laughs> That's their uh, rendition of Guy Fawkes. I like blowing stuff up. That's me. <laughs> okay. So Guy Fawkes came later. There's a bunch of conspirators plotting to blow up a parliament building, and they brought in Guy Fox as some kind of demolition blowing stuff up expert? Is that is that really the the story? So the plot was agreed. Guy Fox was to carry out Robert Catesby's plan to blow up King James I in the Houses of Parliament. So it was really Robert's plan to kill the king and blow up this building. Guy Fox is just someone they recruited to help them accomplish this. That's not at all what, how I thought it happened. I thought Guy Fox had a much more pivotal, pivotal role in like the planning stage and like coming up with this idea. And uh, I don't know why I assumed that, I guess because it's always his name that you hear, particularly here in the United States, we don't hear about Robert or anyone else in this plot. It's Guy Fox and the gunpowder plot. There's an entire holiday around this, right? Uh, I learned about this a long time ago. Bonfire night has to do with, kind of, is it, is it celebrating Guy Fox? Because this is like a, you know, you could interpret this as like a terrorist attack or something. They're really just trying to kill the king and not hurt anyone else, I think. So, you know, it's it's certainly, if not a terrorist attack, an assassination attempt, and is this, what is Bonfire Night doing? Like, celebrating Guy Fox? Or, now that I know the backstory, I have a lot more questions about that aspect, too, that it's a holiday. Huh. An important building where important people meet to make important decisions. What do you think happened when they tried to kill the king? Uh, it didn't work, right? Oh, is that, where, is that really where they're going to let it off? Well, that's okay, because I have one more thing here I want to uh, look at here. This is from uh, a .uk website, and it, it, it's explaining Guy Fox and the gunpowder plot in more serious, like, detail, not in the form of a children's cartoon. So I thought this was worth taking a look at as well. Why did Guy Fox try to blow up Parliament? Catholics across the country had hoped for the end of religious persecution as they had suffered. Um, so they were soon disappointed. The, the Protestant James I was not a tolerant king. So the conspirators with Guy Fox, now among them, decided on a dramatic measure. Uh, Catsby's, okay, Robert Cat Catsby 
plan to blow up Parliament on November 5th. That's when Bonfire Night is now. It's November 5th, when James I, the Queen, and his heir would all be present. Whoa. They actually plan to kill the king, queen, and their heir all at once. Oh, this was very orchestrated, very deliberate. The conspirators hoped the, to crown the king's young daughter, Eliz Princess Elizabeth. Okay, so did they think Princess Elizabeth would be, they'd be better off with Princess Elizabeth in charge? Who were, who were the plotters? Along with Fox and cousins, Catsby and Wintour, the plotters included Winter's brother Robert, their brother brother-in-law John Grant, Catsby's second cousin Francis, his servant Thomas, Fox childhood classmates. God, they had a lot of people involved in this. There's at least ten or more people in this. No one in the group knew much about gunpowder apart from Fox, an explosive expert from his military days. Naturally, he was chosen to set the fuse in the cellars underneath the House of Parliament. Oh boy, he was chosen to be the guy with the match. Right there, under Parliament having to light the fuse for the bombs. That's why he's so well known. That's why he's so famous, right? Because he was, you know, all of them are like plotting this, we'll say. You gotta use the word plot. It's the gunpowder plot. They're plotting, but Guy is the man on the ground actually trying to do the thing, like, actually, on the night, which is pretty unbelievable, pretty incredible. That's why he's so famous. I, I understand now. How did Guy Fox get caught? Okay, yes. So I, I knew the spoiler to this story, that this plot did not succeed. Or this would be, man, who knows how that would have altered the course of history, right? My god. The plan very nearly succeeded. It was only thanks to an anonymous letter to the authorities in late October that the king and his family were not all murdered. A, an, an anonymous letter to the authorities? That's who someone ratted on them. Someone inside the conspirators, the plotters. Someone on the inside knew and tipped them off. Wow, that's how he gets caught. It's not like he got caught sneaking bags of dynamite in or, or like that. They were told he, that they were going to do this. Wow. Royal guards searched the House of Lords at midnight. And in the early hours of November 5th, Fox was discovered in the cellars with a fuse, a lamp, a box of matches, and 36 barrels of gunpowder. Oh my god. God, he was really going to do it. Was he going to get away? Was he going to commit suicide in the act of doing this? Or uh, I don't know if that's a part of this story or anything, but was he, he definitely seemed ready to risk it all for this plot, right? Oh, my God. So what happened? Fox, Fox was arrested and taken to the king. When asked what he was doing in the cellar, Fox replied, I wish to blow the... I wish to blow up the Scottish king and all of his Scottish lords back to Scotland. <laughs> right to the king's face? He said that right to the king's face. I wanted to blow you the hell up. Back to Scotland. Whoa. He, was ex he also expressed his regret at failing. Although insulted, James I couldn't help but praise the traitor's Roman resolution. Yeah, you almost got to respect it in a way. Like, I don't, I don't, I didn't expect the king to respect Guy Fox, but that kind of devotion and determination to any cause is, you know, impressive. And to say it to the king himself, I, well, what was I doing down there? I was going to kill you. That's what I was going to do. And I wish I had. Like, my God. Okay, imprisonment at the Tower, Fox was brought to the Tower of London to be imprisoned and interrogated. Sir William... Wad, lieutenant of the tower, led much of the interrogation. Um, at the time, the monarch had to author authorize any form of torture. James I wrote the royal warrant. If he will not confess, the gentler tortures are first to be used upon him, 
And then step by step, you may employ the harsher. Oh my god. Oh, do, do the do the light torture first. Just pull his fingernails out. You know, the the you know the soft torture. Then the other stuff. Like, oh my god. What a time to be alive. Ugh. So this was in the 1500s. God. The 1500s and 1600s were a period of extreme political and religious upheaval, and torture was used to interrogate. Oh my, and this is like the Tower of London torture, right? Uh, a lot of time, the threat of torture was enough. Yeah, God. Oh, yes, I imagine. Uh, oh, my God. Instruments of torture. Oh, God. Oh, God. When the gentle torture failed, it's likely Fox was racked, uh, stretched on that rack uh, as a horrible device designed to inflict excruciating pain. Were they trying to get him to give up his co-conspirators? Like, tell who was in on it, that kind of stuff. Oh my god, Guy Fox signature before and after his interrogation seems to show that he was indeed tortured. His right, his handwriting was uh, severely damaged. Yeah, you can see on the left-hand side how bad his handwriting is after the torture. He can barely write. Uh, so he is sentenced to be hanged, drawn, and quarters. He was sentenced to death, which isn't shocking. While Fox was at the tower, the other conspirators fled to the Midlands. They were caught, oh, they were caught, by the High Sheriff of Worcestershire on November 8th. Robert Catsby, the Wright brothers, and Thomas Percy were shot dead, and the others taken the Tower of London. My, everyone involved in this was, was caught and executed by the sound of it. Fox and his co-conspirators, Thomas, Ambrose, and Robert, were... Committed, tried, and sentenced for the act of treason. Their fate was grisly. Oh, man. This is set, This is kind of perverse and sad to even read about this part. On January 31st, 1606, but then I continue, of course. They were dragged behind a horse along the streets of London, where one by one they were hanged, drawn, and quartered. Quartered means literally... Like, chopped into pieces, right? Chopped into quarters. Oh. The death of Guy Fox. Fox, already one of the most famous of all plotters, was the last to go up to the gallows. Last of all came the great devil of all, Guy Fox, alias Johnson, who should have put the fire to the powder. Man, I wonder how close he was. Holy crap. His body was weak with the torture and sickness. He was scarcely able to go up the ladder. Yet to much ado, by the help of the hangman, went high enough to break his neck by the fall. Well, ugh. it's unfortunate that he was, of course, executed. Well, depending on who you are. If you're the king, then you're happy. And if you're one of the Catholic supporters, you're sad. And, you know, uh, he died instantaneously when he was hung. That's good. Because he had already suffered a lot by the sound of it. He made no speech. But with his crosses and idle ceremonies made his end upon the gallows and the block. To the great joy of all the beholders that the land was ended of so wicked a villainy. Oh my god. Oh, there's a memorial of him? In 1608, Sir William Wad had a large marble, marble memorial erected. Uh, strange as it may seem, this memorial celebrates his success in foiling a national disaster, and to remind other prisoners of the terrible fate. Oh, this was to celebrate catching Guy Fox and the co-conspirators. I thought this was a memorial in, in honor of Guy Fox. I was like, that doesn't make any sense from the viewpoint of the people in power. That doesn't make any sense. I mean, I think they'd be fired pretty quickly if they put up a memorial. <laughs> For, you almost killed our king. Uh, <laughs> congratulations. Let's remember that. Okay. But this is remembered to this day. That's the funny thing. This is one of the most well-remembered plots in all of history. I didn't know the details about this, but I know, like, even as an American, I know of this stuff. Um, the monument records the names of the gunpowder plot conspirators. Oh, out of darkness and into the light. So there is a monument to this? Wow. Uh, there's 
This is po possibly the earliest commemoration of the gunpowder plot. Wow, and, and there's the bonfire tradition. And, oh, it was in January 1606, James I passed an act to celebrate the failure of the gunpowder plot. So, called the Observance of November 5th Act. Okay, and it involved bonfires and fireworks. Is that? Okay, I had it backwards. I thought Bonfire Night to this day was to celebrate Guy Fawkes. And I was like, are we celebrating that he almost blew up a king in Parliament? Do pe you know, that's fine if people want to celebrate that. Goodness knows I don't understand any of this stuff. But it seems that Bonfire Night is actually a, a tradition that's continued since 1606 to observe the failure of the gunpowder plot. Um, it remained until 1859, although celebrations still take place today. Okay, that makes, okay, a lot more sense. Although Guy Fawkes was not the mastermind behind the gunpowder plot, he certainly became its figurehead. Yes, yes, exactly. Guy Fawkes is who I thought came up with the whole uh, gunpowder plot and carried it out. Uh, I, the detail is a little different. He was just someone they recruited. And specifically, he became the person in charge of, you know, setting off the bomb, which is pretty incredible. Unfortunately for him, he was the one caught red-handed and the first to be arrested and taken to the Tower of London. Over 400 years later, Guy Fawkes' image persists as a symbol of rebellion. Yes, Yes, that's true. I don't think Guy Fox could have even ever imagined what an incredibly popular and well-known figure of rebellion and resistance he is to this day, 400 years later. I don't think he could ever have ever have known that. I think he would have been quite proud of himself, honestly. Today, you can visit the Tower of Torture exhibition to uncover the methods of torture at the Tower of London. My God and see replicas of instruments of torture used on Guy Fox. My God. Okay. I don't know if I'm going to be doing all that, but this was a fascinating, fascinating story. And it, it honestly cleared up a lot of misconceptions I had about Guy Fox and the gunpowder plot. He was not the one who came up with it. He is the one who had to actually hold the little match and that they wanted to do it. He was the one caught... And the one they were like, when when the king and his guards caught him, they were like, you planned this. You did this. So he ended up kind of becoming the face of the whole plot in the end. And yeah, Bonfire Night is more of a celebration or remembrance or tradition of this whole event and the foiling of this plot. I don't know how people in the UK think one way or the other about this plot. I, you know, I think people in the UK are probably happy that history has gotten to them to this moment where you get to sit, sit, back, sit back and relax and watch a guy on YouTube, an American on YouTube, watch and learn about the gunfire plot. And if Guy Fox had succeeded, who knows where we'd be? Who knows how history would have changed, but... Just learning about stuff like this is so fascinating. The course of history was almost so drastically altered by a couple of men trying to, to change the circumstances of their life. And uh, from their point of view, Catholics being persecuted and treated very badly, I don't know the details of all that, but that sounds bad and it sounds like they were trying to do something about it. And it's a fascinating story. I'm not going to commend or condone it one way or the other. I don't know enough about the nuances of this to, to make that call, to make that judgment. But learning about this story, because it is such a well-known name, Guy Fox here in America, and, and the symbolism, learning about the details of the story is fascinating. And actually, I'm really glad I did it. I enjoyed this. So anyway, if you enjoyed this as well, feel free to give this video a like or leave a comment. And if you're interested in more videos like this, me reacting to the UK and UK culture and stuff about the UK I've never learned before or seen, feel free to subscribe for more. And until then, thanks for watching and see you next time.